Good evening. My name is James Little from Mass Spec Interpretation Services. This is part one of a series of videos on data processing for the NIST MSMS search using the Thermo Freestyle software. This software is used to process Orbitrap data from Thermo systems of LCMS analysis that are then used for identifications by the NIST search. This is my favorite approach and it was shared with me by a colleague there are several other different ways one could use Freestyle to process the files, and I showed that in a separate video. If you look at the bottom here, the Orbitrap is, data is acquired in one acquisition, and that's very efficient. It acquires both the LCMS and the MSMS analyses. And in fact, the MSMS analyses are done in a non-targeted mode by what the instrument sees in the MS part of the instrument, and then it takes those ions of interest and fragments them to give MSMS spectra that are searched by the NIST search. It gets both positive and negative mode at the same time. It gets photo direct detector array and UV vis analyses in separate channels. We'll illustrate this today with Univol 3000, which has a molecular weight of 214, and Tenovin 234, which has a molecular weight of 447. The NIST 2023 version of the Tandem Library is a great resource for unknown identifications. It's a big increase in the amount of data that was present in the 2020 release, with 60% more than the 2020 release, and it contains 2.4 million spectra. And the important thing about this is that these are all compounds that are selected for relevance, as shown by the different databases that they query to find compounds that they purchase. And after they purchase these compounds, they're measured at NIST and thoroughly evaluated before they're added to the database. So now let's go to the software. We'll first go to the Excalibur suite of applications and open Freestyle. Then open the Orbi Univil 3000 data file. And what comes up is the total ion chromatogram, which includes the positive and negative ions and the MS and the MSMS. So we need to parse this out to find the different parts of the data that we need for the analysis. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go up to the top here to the workspace options and go to chromatogram and create ranges. This opens another window at the bottom where we'll first go to the filter and the the trace that we're looking for is all the way to the bottom. This is the total ion trace for the MS for the positive. And so we'll put it on the top. We'll add another range here. Again, we'll go this time to the bottom again, all the way to the bottom, and then open the negative ion. So that'll be our second trace. Let's add one more trace, which will be our detector type, which will open the PDA. So now if you look at the top, we have the positive on the top for the MS, the negative MS, and then the diode array. So what we need to do here is to save our layout. So we'll go to workspace options at the top, go to layouts and say save as, and we'll save it as JL default. I'll just overwrite one that I have there. We'll say yes. And now when we bring up a different data file, we'll have what we need and we won't have to go and set, do the setup the next time for every data file we open. So let's go to the top. So I'm clicking on the positive ion at the top. And if I just single left click on that, we'll see our 215 ion for the M plus H for euphenol. We'll see this ion at 250. This is a interference somehow that's in the background. So it's a, not of any importance because we found it in the blank. So if you want to, you can average to make sure the peak is consist consistent all the way through the mass spec. So I click right, right clicked and got average, left click and drag, and I've got the average spectrum now. This is fine for doing MS in most cases, but when you do MS MS, you do not want to average because if you average the MS MS chromatogram, when you send this to the NIST search, you will move all the decimal places to the right of the decimal. So we've got our positive ion spectrum for the M plus H. We have the M minus H for the uh, negative ion trace compound, as you'd expect for the 214. And we'll click on the bottom 
and you'll have the diode array. Again, you cannot average the diode array spectrum. You can only take a single point to see what it appears to be in the bottom trace here. So now we've got everything we need to do in here. So let's do the MSMS. So if you go to the MSMS, we need to go up to the top. We'll click on the little positive ion here at the top. So we'll click on it to get the spectrum. Now we'll come down to the bottom where it says filter here. And we'll go find the 215 ion, which is the, for the protonated species. So we're looking at the positive ion traces and we're scrolling until we see the 215 and we select it. Now we have the tonal ion chromatogram for the positive ion MSMS. And again, like I said here, don't average these because when you send them to the NIST search, you will not get any accurate mass data to the right of the decimal. So just single left click on it. And you can see we have a nice M plus H. Then we also see the fragment ions. If you had this selected at the top, say I've got the bar for the chromatogram selected, and you wanted to send it to the NIST search, you'd come up to the top and say workspace processing, and you'd see export, export to NIST is grayed out. You cannot send it there. So you got to be sure to left click on the bar to get the MS, MS spectrum highlighted, and now you can export to NIST. If you did that, it would directly go to NIST and give you the results. I don't want to do that in this video because you have to look at another video to make sure that Freestyle is set up properly and also the NIST search software is set up properly before you do the searches. So we'll we'll stop at that point with regard to the NIST search. The same thing for the negative ion here. If we click on it, we'll see we need the 213. We'll come down to the filter. We'll go till we find the negative ion trace. So we're looking at the negative ions here. We're looking for 213. We single left click on it. You can click several different places if you want to see if it's consistent through it, but it looks like it is. I'll just click at the top where it's the most intense. We've got a nice N plus N minus H ion, and then the fragment ions. We could left click this and export to NIST for searching. So that's pretty much how you get things ready to send to the NIST search from MSMS MS data. So we did save our settings. So let's let's open up another file just to show you how easy it is to open another file after you save your settings. So we'll go up to File. We'll open up the Tenevent here. You see it's very messy, but when we go to the Display Options, Workspace, here we go, Workspace Options, and bring down the layout and say Apply. We'll bring up the one that we saved, the JL default, and apply it. And you can see we have a nice trace for it. Now we have the positive ion at the top for the MS, the negative ion for the MS, and the diode array at the bottom. So you can click on this if you want to and average it to see if it looks consistent across it. Average the spectrum. Looks good. It weighs 447, so we've got a nice M plus H at 448. We go to the negative and do the same thing. Zoom. Average across it, right click, average spectrum, click and drag. You can see the 446 for the M minus H. We do have a lot of chemical noise here, so if you wanted to clean up the spectrum a little bit, there is background subtracting that you only use in the MS mode, not the MS MS mode, but the MS mode. So you can go to the top here. We've already averaged it here. We go to the top here. We can see that the average for the signal is already in the box here. If we want to take some background before it, we click on the S1. Make sure you click on the white box here to get the I get this selected. Then come down, and as you click and drag, you can see what it's averaging out. So it took out uh, a lot of the chemical noise in front. Let's do one in back too. It's not as much chemical noise in the back, but we'll just do one. So again, left click in the box, come to the the negative ion, left click and drag, and now we have, we got rid of a lot of the chemical noise and we have the 446. So if we wanted to get MSMS -MS data for that one, you just, of course, go down to the bottom and look for the 446 in the negative ion mode. So I'm looking for that. A lot of different ions since it did non-targeted. Selected a lot of ions to analyze. So now we have 
our negative ion here and we can single left click on it to get the 446. Again, we can single left click on the top one to get the 448. We'll look for its MSMS -MS spectrum for 448. Maybe it'll be a little bit more informative than the one for the negative. The negative didn't have many, didn't have many ions. So we've got a nice MS2 spectrum, MSMS -MS spectrum for the M plus H. You could again left click on that to highlight it, then you could export it to NIST. You can see it takes a while sometimes on these non-targeted to look for things. So there's an easier way they do things. So let's go back and uh, set up our data file again. So I'll go back to file. Uh, let's go to workspace, layouts, apply, just to straighten things back out. Now we have our traces back at the top. Another thing you can do is something called nearby precursor that makes it easy to select things. The only caveat here, and I made a separate video about this, this was something shown to me by uh, Ken Matuzak from Thermo. It's, it's a nice addition to this other approach that I'm using here that can be used on top of it, but you cannot average the MS spectrum to use it. You can only single click on it. So let's single click on here to get our 448 ion. We cannot average. Now we go up to the display options. We have to select our spectrum first. We always have to select it. So now I've selected the spectrum. Now I'm going to go to display options. They have something called nearby precursors. And again, I've made a separate video about this, but you just click on that. When you click on that, when you did a single spectrum of the MS, it shows you a little purple circle here. What you do to get the MSMS -MS spectrum of this, it, you just double left click, not single, but double left click. And now we have the MSMS -MS spectrum and you didn't have to go to the menu and look through all the possibilities, it just brought it up. One other thing here, when you have to clean these up when you're working on them, so if you inadvertently get rid of both of them, now you don't have a spectrum window, so you can't really process anything. So you need to go up to workspace options and go to spectrum and say insert view. Now it gets you a spectrum back so you can do your work. But if you didn't have that, it's hard to get it to work. So if you get rid of all your spectra boxes by mistake, just go open another one. So I hope this has been useful. And like I said, I'll do another one on nearby precursors to give you a little bit more information on it. But it's, it's a nice ad addition to this, uh, my favorite approach for doing the processing. So I hope you find it useful and hopefully it will be help you to identify unknowns using the NIST search. Good day.